Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. We're going to be looking at the worm bins today and how to harvest the castings and then set them back up again with fresh bedding and fresh food and what that looks like, the different ingredients that you can use and a little bit more in-depth information about the worm's diet and how amazing your vermicompost can be. So for your worms, you'll need two different sets of items. You're going to need worm bedding and worm food. So many people think that the worms are eating the vegetable scraps, but in reality that's only half true. What's happening is the fungi and microbes are breaking down the vegetable matter into kind of a slurry that the worms come along and scoop up. So they're getting the broken down vegetable matter combined with fungi and microbes. And that's what constitutes the majority of their diet in addition to feeding on soil, broken down carbon, so a big portion of their diet is actually microbes and fungi. So let's take a look at a bunch of different types of worm bedding and vegetable scraps. And I really recommend that you use a diverse amount of each type so that the worms have access to different types of carbon or bedding. And they have different access to fungi and microbes uh, by having different types of food sources in there. And I'm gonna give you my best tips on the best food sources available as well as the best bedding available. Be sure to check out the links down in the description for my worm video all about how to build this three tote system, which is really easy to build and very low maintenance to use. I only deal with this thing about once every three months when I harvest and do this job of changing the bins over and resetting it up. So now when it comes to the worm bedding, here is a bunch of different types that you can use. So they're, they're basically mostly all carbon sources or organic matter sources. So things like old egg cartons are great. Uh, very fine wood chips are pretty good. If you use larger wood chips, that's not the best because they don't break down very well. Finely broken down straw is pretty good. You don't want to use straw that hasn't had a lot of time outside to break down, so fresh straw is not the best because it just doesn't fully break down in the worm bin. Butcher paper or shipping paper that you'll get in your different boxes that you receive, is this stuff, this stuff is really great. Um, I don't use any type of bleached paper. I don't like to use newspaper. You can use newspaper, and it is very safe. Um, it just They use soy ink and that's usually genetically modified, so I, I just don't like to use it because I have so many other great woody material sources, but newspaper is completely safe to use, uh, so go ahead and use that if, if that's your only available uh, paper source. The cardboard is another great one. I find that breaks down really well over a two to three month period. So some things that you would not want to use is glossy material, like things from magazines, uh, cardboard that has a lot of color in it. I don't think that that's probably the smartest option. Nothing with paint or glue or anything that might have chemicals that you don't want. So when I remake my worm bin, I like to use a diverse amount of bedding. So I'm using cartons, cardboard, a little bit of my ground up straw and wood chips here that I just have on the ground floor of my area next to my bins. Um, and then I'm going to blend that with some of my homemade compost. And if you want to learn to make compost, I've got a couple videos all about how to do that as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the really great food sources that you can add. Um, some of the favorite foods for a worm bin would be banana peels, anything in the curb uh, Curbitus family, like cucumbers, melons, squash, pumpkin, any of that stuff is, is fantastic. And the worms really love the bacteria and fungi that grow on those. Um, of course, eggshell is fantastic. Um, eggshell is able to be broken down into calcium, as well as other really fantastic uh, chemicals that the worms can help convert. Greens such as, you know, chard. I have some leftover beet greens here some this is some artichoke that we uh, the outside leaves of the artichoke um, i have a bunch of extra beets right now so i'm going to just chop up little uh, slices like this and lay those inside as well those will break down and become really great food so all things like this are fantastic you know you don't want to use things like corn husk 
I'll put a list, list in the description of all the different really great foods and some of the foods you don't want to use as well. If there's a little bit of mold growing on the food, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, they can deal with rotting things and some of this will start to rot a little bit. One of the most important things is to not overfeed your worm bin and I'm going to show you guys how much to add in at the beginning and talk about how much to add over the life cycle of the bin. And then here's a couple supplements that you may want to add as well. These definitely aren't required. These are some things that can help enhance the nutrition of the worm bin so you can have healthier worms, better biology, uh, running through the gut biomes of the worms and therefore in your castings and just have more nutrients in the castings overall. So this right here, this is oyster shell. And oyster shell is a supplement I use, of course, for my chickens. Um, I use it, uh, if you've ever seen my video about how I made my uh, market gardens, I've added it into the soil itself to help feed calcium and microbes. And this is a great supplement because the worms and bacteria in there will help uh, to convert this into a really special compound called chitin, uh, which is fantastic for the cells, cell walls of your plants. And it's, it's a really good material. So I'll add a tiny bit of that in there. And it does take a long time to break down, um, but they start, their acids start eating away at this stuff and you'll get a little bit of the chemical compounds in there. Another great one, this is what I use in my seedling mixes, in soil blocks, in my worm teas, all sorts of things. Kelp meal is fantastic. This Dr. Earth stuff is really good because they also add mycorrhizae. And it's pretty, it's, it's, a, it's a meal, but it's ground down pretty well. The worms can uh, consume off of this as well. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to these different supplements that you may want. And I use them for many different purposes, not just my worms. Azomite is another great mineral source for your worms and soil. Then I've got the SD microbe Bokashi grain. And I'm gonna be making a video soon about Bokashi composting, but this is something that you can also add to your worm bins to increase the, the fungal and biology components. And this is just really fantastic stuff. Check out the link in the description so you guys can pick up some of this. This is the best Bokashi grain on the market and my friend makes it and he uses organic grains to do it. He even uses my beets to make fermented plant juice out of the beets and he blends in different minerals and other great stuff inside of this. And um, he's had a lab even look at it and they've got fantastic beneficial nematodes and all sorts of awesome biology going in here. And I got a link down in the description that you guys can buy from. It gives you a small discount and it's also a way that you can help out the channel. So normally when I'm doing my worm bins, I do all of them at the same time. But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna do one of these. So when I harvest, I'll throw them all in a big bin like this that I can put a lid on and move around so that I can keep it out of the sun. So if you haven't seen this worm bin system and how it works, definitely go check out my other video about it. There's a link in the description. This top bin is where most of the worms are. Uh, so this is going to go to the side and this will become the bottom tote. This is where the finished castings are, the tote underneath, and this is what we're going to harvest today. And here you can see a little bit of the straw is still left around. Some of these larger wood chips are still there. So that's why I mentioned that these are, they're good ingredients to add, but they should be very finely ground if you're gonna be using them. And then of course, the third tote in my system is this bottom table and it collects all the worm leachate down at the bottom here. And that's just done to save money on the bin system. And you might notice that there is a lot of red worms in here. I could have let this bin go a bit longer before I harvested it, but I need casting soon. And these worms do great because I can add them into my compost. They go out into my garden and they can survive for a while out there in the top inch or so of the soil. But these are composting red worms and they're more designed to be kind of contained in a, in a localized area. They do last pretty long out in your garden as long as they have access to um, good organic matter and some leaves and stuff that have fallen onto the ground. But in general, earthworms are the ones that are gonna be digging through your soil, going deep and stuff like that. That's not with the red wrigglers. And that's why they're great to use in a composting system. They can be isolated in a bin like this. They'll continue to work and eat on these things and secrete their biology and castings in here um, while I harvest it over the next few months and use it in my 
worm and compost teas. The bin that was my top bin becomes the bottom. Many of my worms are in here. They're gonna finish off what's ever in here. And then they'll eventually move up through these quarter inch holes into this bin, colonize this bin to start eating on all that fresh bedding and vegetative matter. So now what we need to do is put layers of bedding material and compost, about three layers. Then at the very top, we'll put a little bit of the vegetative matter, fresh stuff for the worms to eat. So the first layer I like to put is just a little piece of cardboard in here. And that's to prevent uh, some of the bedding that we put in from falling in these little holes. But there's still plenty of room for the worms to come up and through. And then they'll, this will decompose over time and just be great worm food. So we're gonna put in a little bit of each of those materials that I mentioned. That's a little bit of finely ground wood chips. If I have any large chunks, I'll just grab those, get those out of there. And now we're gonna add a nice three inch layer of compost in here. And this compost that I'm adding is basically good to use, but you can still see there's still some material that needs to break down a little further. Well, that's fantastic because our worms are gonna do that for us. So we just did our first layer, and in each layer, we're gonna add a little bit of moisture in here because the worms need a moist environment. They don't want it to be sopping wet, but it should be moist. Oh, I almost forgot. Now we're gonna add our little bit of amendments in here. So that's the oyster shell. Just a very small amount of each of these. Okay, and that's it. Now we're just gonna add, just add a small amount of water now. Another great carbon source would be uh, leaves. Leaves are another, dried up leaves are fantastic. I just don't have any right now. And if you don't have compost uh, available to yourself, you could also just go to the store and I'd recommend getting the Kellogg's garden soil. That has some of a thicker uh, material in there. It's not finely sifted and that's more of the stuff you'd like to use. I'd, I'd use that uh, instead of using my, the compost. But. Homemade compost would be the best material to use. And your worms could basically just survive off the material I'm putting in here, but adding in those fresh, the fresh vegetation is gonna provide a lot more nutrition and it's gonna be a lot better for them, uh, making you a lot better castings. Now, as you're putting the water in, it's gonna drain through and collect the leachate. And I'll show you guys that in a moment. One more layer to go and we're almost done. Okay, and now I can add in my fresh vegetation. Now this part you wanna be careful. You don't wanna to add too much, especially when there's not really any worms in here. Now I could take a little bit of worms from my bin, just take a small handful and throw them in there and they'll inoculate this and start colonizing it. Or I could wait and they will come up from the bottom bin. Either way is fine. So I've got my beets in here, my beet greens, a little bit of the eggshell, if you have a lot of eggshell, you could use this in place of the oyster shell. And it'll have the same effect. And you could spread that throughout the bin. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna feed them right now until a few weeks later when I open this up and I see that there's a, a, a better sized population in here. Then I can feed a lot more. Uh, so that you're not getting a lot of rotting food, which is going to attract flies and other sorts of things that you don't really want in here. All right, so that's it. That's all that we're going to have to do. This is completely reset. 
then now we can just put the top on. And then you always want to make sure to have your bins covered with either burlap or cardboard, something to keep the sun off, keep them in a shady location at all times and somewhere where it's not going to get a lot of rain on top. And then the last thing I want to show you and talk about is the worm leachate, which is not worm tea. Worm tea is an aerated uh, worm compost mixed with water. So let's check out the leachate, which you can still use in your garden. And it's really fantastic. Now, when I do all of these bins, I'll be able to collect a lot more water, but you want to use this leachate when it's fresh. I just added all that nice water. It's straining through it's in the bin and then you want to dilute it about just to be safe. You can dilute it one to 10 and then you can water that out onto your plants. Now, because we're not aerating this, there is a potential for it to be anaerobic. And if your worm castings have any sort of anaerobic smell, which kind of smells like poop or death, possibly like a dead animal, that is an anaerobic smell, which means, you know, it's okay to water it around your plants, but I wouldn't use it on anything that you're going to eat very soon, just in case it's a precaution. Um, so you could take this leachate and then aerate it if you wanted to. Um, I typically, I'm only getting this leachate once every three months or two months when I'm redoing these bins. I'll just water it in on my fruit trees or things like my herbs, things like that that I'm not harvesting all the time. Um, to make my worm teas, I'm using the finished castings for that, putting it in a bag and aerating it for 48 hours. And you can see a video all about that on my channel. Yeah, so please don't get confused, worm leachate which is the just the draining through of the bins is far different than worm tea, which is an aerated aerobic process. If you guys have any questions about what I just did or about my worm bins, please put those down in the comments and check out the video's descriptions for the different products that I use and links to the videos that will help you if you want to learn more about worm composting and making teas and all that sort of stuff.